The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. Hello and welcome to Health for a Lifetime. I'm your host Don McIntosh and today we're just delighted to have Dr. Marianne McNeilis with us. Well, welcome Dr. McNeilis. We're glad that you could take time out of your schedule. And uh, you've written a, a new book. Well actually it's not that new. It's been out for several years and now it's in I believe 12 different languages. Cambodia, Thailand did you say? Uh, Laotian, Vietnamese, yes. Romanian, Spanish. It's and in, several African dialects. All right. It's entitled God's Healing Way, and uh, it has the natural remedies section, and then it has the uh, also the health laws. Actually, that's the first section, then the natural remedies, and then God's Healing Way, that being um, the God's power in, in those different yes. aspects or simple remedies. And today you're going to show us a simple remedy, and you see here, we kind of got things set up here. I am... I am feeling sick, I have a cold, I, I feel terrible, and uh, what are you going to do for me today? I have a headache, uh, I just feel terrible. We're going to do the hot foot bath. All right. One of the um, very basic treatments that I feel, if you know, no other hydrotherapy treatment, and this was the only one you knew, you could treat the greatest variety of ailments with this one. Okay, so do I need to take off my shoes or anything like that? Yes, you will. Okay, <laughs> I'll start doing that, and let's just get ready here. So right. uh, anybody at home, you can take off your shoes. That's easy enough to do. Right. While Don is taking off his shoes, I want to read to you a text from Psalm 33, verses 6 and 9. It says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. If God can speak and have something appear before our eyes, certainly his power can be with us and attend us when we practice these simple healing remedies. Okay, I have this, uh, I have this little container here, and uh, what do we need to do? This container is full of hot water All right. and it's a good idea for us to roll up our sleeves here and decide is this water too hot or not hot enough for your feet well our hands are not a good indicator of hot and cold as we talked about in a they have too much uh, prior program. Too, too many calluses or whatnot <laughs> not as sensitive not as sensitive so you got to use your so we can use our elbow to Check and see. And if our elbow can stay in the hot water without having to be withdrawn quickly, We're it's okay. good enough for his feet. So I should put my uh, feet right in there. How full do we fill this, this, this up? We like to have it full enough so that when the feet are in, the water comes at least halfway between the ankles and the knees. Right, it's idea, ideal to have it about mid-calf. I don't run away from you now. I can't get away now. You've got me. We have now, a what do we do next? now what do we do next? Now we have his feet in the warm water and he's feeling comfortable. They aren't. It isn't overly hot or too cool. Okay. And the next thing you can see here, we have draped on the chair a blanket. I just cover myself up under, with this. Underneath on the outer cover and a sheet, okay. a flat sheet on the inner cover. And so then we will simply bring this around All right. his shoulders. I'm feeling much better already, although I still have that crushing headache. You're going to feel a little warm and sweaty. All right. And, of course, when we do the treatment, we'll probably have people in his, uh, a comfortable light attire, like an undergarment or a no, sweeping garment. No suit and tie like me. Not like that. <laughs> but Any? we will All pretend... Right. That, uh, that's the case. 
We like to cover the uh, where the feet are, completely cover so that the water will um, stay warm for a reasonable length of time. And we'll like it so that in a period of time, actually the individual will start to sweat. You know, there were two things that I still need to do. One is this towel that is draped here is actually not just for decoration. It actually should have been put on the floor before this pan of hot water was put here. But since we don't actually have hot water in here, we can take a little right. liberty to flip there. it underneath here. And later on, you'll see why this is a handy thing to do, especially if you have that pail full of water and reasonably heavy. The other thing that I like to remind uh, people that you do before the treatment begins is to always remember to have a word of prayer. We pray first to ask God the Lord's blessing upon the treatment. We pray after the treatment to thank him for helping us with the treatment. And now I would like to share with you a little uh, picture that I have from the country of Cambodia. If we can show that now. When we are in the field or out in the villages, I remind the people just as I have reminded you that we always, I said, if they remember nothing else that I tell them, please remember to begin the treatment with prayer, asking for the Lord's blessings, and to complete the treatment with a prayer of thanks, a thanksgiving to him for helping with the treatment. That is the faith factor that we don't wait for the result. We pray and ask him and thank him for giving the result of the, a good result to our treatment. Uh, so uh, you're praying and thanking him for that, but what's the, the real way this works? How does this work physiologically? We know that the power of prayer, of course, works, and uh, nothing else would work without it, but how, do, how is this treatment working? What's it doing? God has laws or laws of health and laws of physiology, and we're employing one of the God-given laws, and that is when we put the feet in hot water, the feet often will turn a pink color. And the reason for that is that the heat will dilate the blood vessels upon the surface of the skin, and as much as one-third of the blood volume of the body then can come to the area of the feet. And this will actually decongest the head or anything proximal to the feet. And this is why anything from a headache to a backache to a stomachache to a... Uh, even pelvic cramps can be helped with the benefit of a hot foot bath. And this is why it is such a versatile uh, treatment and such a wonderful treatment. So if you have towels, if you have a bucket, if you have hot water, you have trust and faith in God, then this is going to help with a lot of different things. It will. How and long do I, do I sit here? How long do I uh, stay a, a, a cocoon, as it, as it were? Well, an ideal time is about... Uh, 20 to 30 minutes uh, at least for an adult and uh, for a smaller child from say the age of three onward uh, and you can use it as soon as the child can sit still for a period of time it may only be 10 or 15 minutes for a smaller child but that's all right that can be done so anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 possibly 20 minutes for a child but 20 to 30 sometimes even 40 minutes for an adult Okay, so uh, now we've been there 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then what do we do? Not quite. Not quite. Okay, what do we <laughs> do next? He's only been in his uh, treatment for about five minutes now, and are you starting to get warm? <laughs> I'm warm. I'm Under I'm these feeling, lights uh, you are, I'm swallowed. sure. Well, this is why in addition to the bucket of hot water, you will have another basin here, which you will see, and this has some ice water in Ooh. it, and uh, not as bad as you think. This, this, it's a welcome feel. And there's a couple of washcloths, there may be a, uh, a small towel, and these are in this ice water for a very good reason, because when you start to get warm and start you to sweat, that's right, we want to keep the head cool with these treatments. This will minimize any chance of getting headaches, and it will also um, be a comfort factor as well. All right, we'll put it on there. We All might right. Do it up there, put the, that big one on there, and that's just... Uh, the long ones, a lot of times you can put it right around the neck. 
All right. And this is one thing. You can put the cool water right around the neck. I don't want to cover my microphone up too much there. No, we'll try to leave that out. All if right. he sounds muffled, we'll uh, know we have to change the towel. Okay. And then we just, uh, with a small child, you can actually just make a turban and put the, and you can even with an adult, take a larger towel, make a turban, put it right around the head, or you can wipe the head with a cool towel Boy, that or washcloth good. during the time of the treatment. So Never felt better. A lot of times when you start to sweat, you can lose as much as a cup of water just through the pores of your skin with sweat during a treatment. And this is why we like to also have a glass of water and a straw, depending if a person is lying down. It's just a little easier to drink with a straw. And so this can be um, just room temperature water, and we will give him a, right. a sip of water I, I here. I certainly need one. Yeah, right. Mm. For your mouth is a little dry by Excellent. then. Excellent. Good. <laughs> so we, we try to keep comfortable. But there's another thing we have to remember, too. All the time his feet have been in the water, it's been five or ten minutes now, and so we need to add a little hot water to that uh, bucket. Are your feet getting a little cool now? They're, they're getting cool. We need some hot water. Getting a little bit yeah, too comfortable. Add a little water. All righty. Well, for this, we may do several things, depending on the size of the bucket. He can take his feet out of the bucket, but if we can move his feet to one sure. side. Put some in there. We can just move his, actually, one foot in front of the other All right. to one That's side. Right. Ooh, man. And you will notice yes, indeed. it's a pretty tight quarters. And this is hot water. This is boiling water. Right. So we don't want to burn him. And if anything, I'm going to burn myself before I burn my patient. So I will take my hand and, and uh, swish around the water here, and between my hand and the edge of the bucket, I will carefully and slowly pour in some hot water. But what you don't do is you don't have the, the person take their feet out. You just, if possible. You may not have to do it. Right, good. So you can just uh, put them to one side, but I have okay. to keep in touch with you. I don't just dump in All the right. whole bucket okay. but I our tea kettle. But I say, how does that feel now? It feels that... good, but we've got about a minute 30 left here. So what do we do to finish this up? All right. Since we've got to finish our treatment, and we'll assume we've done this several times, okay. uh, this is the grand finale to this treatment. At the end of the treatment, we have him take his feet out of the water. Put them right on that towel. Not quite yet. Oh. <laughs> Almost. But just kind of bring your feet up here and put them on the and put them right on my hand, actually, and tip your toes up toward the ceiling. Right. Toes up toward the ceiling. And this is a pitcher of cool water. Oh, no. Oh, but his feet have been nice and hot. So then we, t we let him know what we're doing. This will be <laughs> only for a few seconds of cool water. And he was a very, very good patient. He didn't even kick me reflexly here. And then we put the feet down, and we put it... So what's the cold right water the for? Towel. Close the door? Yes, to close the pores of the okay. skin and can finish the treatment. Then we dry well between the toes, put on a pair of warm socks or slippers. If he has gotten very sweaty, then we will simply take a towel and we will take out his arm, arms and the, the legs. We'll just have him bring his arms straight out here and we'll just... Rub me down. Yeah, so that just take me. off the sweat with the cool cloth and I then we'll dry already. it. And we'll do that to both arms and legs, and then we'll let him put on a, a clean change of, uh, of non-sweaty night clothes and go rest for one hour, 30 minutes to one hour. If we don't have time to rest, we don't have time for the treatment. <laughs> we're so talking we need to, to rest We're afterwards. talking to Dr. Marianne McNeilis. I feel much better, and uh, I think you will too if you come back and join us in the second half. We've got more things to show you. We hope that you join us. Have you found yourself wishing that you could shed a few pounds? Have you been on a diet for most of your life, but not found anything that will really keep the weight off? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then we have a solution for you that works. Dr. Hans Deal and Dr. Eileen Lettington have written a marvelous booklet called Reversing Obesity Naturally, and we'd like to send it to you free of charge. Here's a medically sound approach successfully used by thousands who are able to eat more and lose weight permanently without feeling guilty or hungry through lifestyle medicine. Dr. Deal and Dr. Ludington have been featured on 3ABM, and in this booklet, 
They present a sensible approach to eating, nutrition, and lifestyle changes that can help you prevent heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. Call or write today for your free copy of Reversing Obesity Naturally, and you could be on your way to a healthier, happier you. It's absolutely free of charge, so call or write today. Welcome back. As you can tell, I feel much better. I'm no longer enshrouded with various cloths and garments, but Dr. McNeilis, thank you very much. I feel much better. Um, and uh, also, I'm just delighted with your book that has all the information about these different treatments, God's Healing Way. And uh, so we looked at the hot foot bath that can happen in any culture, in any country, and really has a lot of different treatments. But I have something i got to confess. You know what it is? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I still sense that I have a, a sore throat. I have a little tickle in my throat. And uh, so uh, what can you do to help me? I have just the remedy for you. Excellent. I thought you might. Okay. And it is in our little book, God's Healing Way, All under right. the section of the heating compress. Heating compress. Is this the same thing my mother used when I was growing up? It could be. All right. Let's see what happens Sometimes here. it's the wool sock, not necessarily the dirty sock, but the wool sock <laughs> okay. around the throat. All right. The heating compress can be used uh, to a num number of body areas and is a good adjunct to the uh, hot foot bath or the even the hot and cold contrast bath. I like to use them often in conjunction with one other treatment because it tends to prolong the effect mm -hmm. of the treatment that you've just completed. And this is the way it works. It's more localized than it is. It's a more localized okay. effect. So if you have a sore throat, a very easy thing to do is to apply the heating compress to the throat area, neck area. The heating compress consists of two parts, a moist inner cloth. Does it have to be cotton? It can be of any material. In fact, this is simply a washcloth, okay. but a piece of flannel cloth or loosely woven cloth, any cloth like that will do. Actually, it doesn't even have to be moist. Occasionally, in very elderly or very young um, it may, they may not be able to heat up a moist cloth. And so just use a medicated or dry cloth instead. Put that around the neck. But what you do is first you moisten it in just cool water. Mm -hmm. Take the inner cloth and moisten it in cool water and then wring it out very thoroughly so it's not soggy, but it's damp. And then you place it around the neck. You can go ahead and put that around your neck. It'll feel cool. Okay. It, it usually like is good to have it long enough to wrap completely around the neck. That mm -hmm. one doesn't quite, but that's all right. And then you take a dry outer cloth. That can be a piece of wool or heavy, tightly woven blanket material that needs to actually be wider than the inner cloth because what you want to do is to actually snugly cover completely that moist inner cloth and don't have any of the moisture on the uh, moist cloth being seen at all. So, you can't see any of the so that it's not exposed to the air. And then you apply it very snugly around and then we can take some safety pins and pin, pin it up. and pin you. Um, my safety pins aren't here so you will hold it for this demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> and we can leave this on pinned of course on the outer part. Uh, for several hours or overnight. Mm -hmm. Now, in within about 30 minutes time, the moist, cool inner cloth should be heating up. And so it's a good idea within about a half an hour to check. If it's a small child that cannot tell you, um, then you need to stick your finger inside and see if that cloth is heating up. And then when it's heated up, what do you do? Then you simply, you know that the treatment is going to work, and then you leave it on either for four hours, several hours, or overnight. Mm -hmm. By the time morning comes, often that moist cloth will be dry as well as warm, and uh, then you can simply remove it <laughs> so right. we won't leave you... Uh, with that on, and then you Ooh, can. Ooh, I feel better oh, already. This is nice and warm. Very now, nice. Now, what you do is it's heated up already with him, and then you just take a little bit of cool cloth and you just do a little cool mitten friction, just a little cool rub and a dry off, and you have completed that treatment. So you close out those pores again. Yes. The way that the heating compress works is actually the cool cloth 
uh, again drives the uh, blood more inward underneath the tissue part being treated. But as it heats up, again, the surface of the skin, the vessels dilate, drawing the blood out to the skin surface, thereby again decongesting the part that is being treated and allowing a greater circulation of the blood in that area. Mm. This is a, a mini treatment of the hot and cold contrast or the Well, other I can tell treatments. you one thing. I've had this treatment before when I was growing up, and even now I use it, and it works. I, I, have, I have used it many times, and it, uh, it just works. I'm just going to say it works. You can trust this. I know that it works. And you pray before this treatment and afterwards as well, right? Oh, I do with everyone. Uh, this was one treatment I can recall earlier in my career being plagued with frequent sore throats before a lot of my lifestyle changes occurred. And when I learned about this simple treatment, I decided I was certainly going to try it. Many sore throats are often caused by viruses mm -hmm. or things that really doctors cannot adequately treat. And I can recall if I felt a scratchy sore throat feeling now for the next seven to ten days, ten, seven to ten days, I'm probably going to have to suffer with this thing. But this cut, cuts it down, plus probably oh, a lot of water too, overnight. right? Overnight. What about this overnight. lemon? Should we put some lemon in there and garlic? Is that what you have that for? Well, I'll tell you what that will be for. But I will <laughs> say one final thing on the heating compress. It is so simple that even a doctor can do it. Oh. <laughs> so, well, we're glad you're with us today, doctor. What, what's the uh, lemon and garlic for? It, I have here one of nature's wonderful natural antibiotics. In fact, the garlic uh, is found almost everywhere in the world that I have been, from mm -hmm. Romania to Cambodia to uh, Laos, and most anywhere you will find the garlic. Garlic is uh, put by our creator there for several reasons. It is antibacterial. Anti you can rub it on stuff and it will help? It will. Antiviral, antifungal, and antiparasitic. It has uh, at least those distinct properties, among many others, that make it of value. I think it lowers your cholesterol, too. Yes, and blood pressure. It's an, it has anti-cancer mm -hmm. properties. And it keeps those people away from you who you really don't know whether or not they like you, right? It's wonderful. <laughs> it's many, many great uh, things. So now, what, how, do you, how are you going to use that today? One of the wonderful natural antibiotic teas that almost everyone has can have in their kitchen if they have a garlic bulb and a lemon are making garlic lemon tea mm, and this good. is especially good for the upper respiratory passages and for the lungs and this is a very simple thing to make you simply take your kettle okay. and boil up a quart of water now I'll just set it on my lap here for demonstration and from your bulb you can extract anywhere from Two to four. Okay, two to pieces. four of those. Two to four garlic. And you just put them in there. You can put the uh, left over that. here. Let's do Good idea here. All right. And you take out the two to four cloves. There is that what you're talking about? Yes. Now, if you can stand garlic, uh, uh, well, go ahead with four. But I'll assume that you're a novice like I. Do you cut that up, or you just put it in that way? What you can do with these is either chop them up or put them through a garlic press or mash them. Mash them or blend them and in a little bit of water. And then when you've got your water boiling, just put your blended, mashed, or pressed garlic right, right in into there. here. Okay. You can add a little pinch of salt if you want a little flavor to it. That's okay. fine. And then you just put your lemon pinch. in there along with it? Uh, you can, but I don't always do that. Then often after I have the garlic in the boiling water, yeah. I will simply put the lid on, take it off the heat, and let it sit for approximately 20 or 30 minutes or until it cools down enough to drink. And mm, then, I can smell it already. I know you can't smell it where you are, oh, but that smells great. You want to I put can, that in there? Yes, I'll, All right. just, I'll just put those in there for now to All free right. my hands up That's here. going to be some really strong garlic there. Yes. <laughs> and then the lemon? Then, after it's ready to drink, I'll pour myself a cup of tea, and I'll uh, cut the lemon into quarters, half and then half again, and I'll squeeze about a quarter of a fresh lemon into my cup of tea, or just, if it's cleaned off, just drop that whole lemon, rest of the Doesn't lemon rind in there. Doesn't that make things constrict a bit, the lemon? Oh, What's it do? 
it uh, it makes it gives it a wonderful flavor, and you have a, a a nice tea that is also good for the lungs and the um, upper respiratory passages. Lemon and garlic have even be, been written up in the medical literature is of great benefit for the the lungs. Okay, we have a little guy here that has not uh, fallen over there. We're glad. What uh, yes. what are we going to do with him? Well, often we wonder what to do with babies. And uh, sometimes they can get croup and coughs. And one can make a little heating compress to the chest quite easily, very much the same way as we did to the throat. You can take a piece of cloth. After you've given the baby a warm bath and, and the baby is nice and warm and relaxed, you can take some cool water. Again, make a smaller little cloth here. I'll make this a small enough for this baby and just put right on the bare chest. Okay the uh, cloth and then you can put a little bit of plastic here just to keep it from uh, and then wrap it up with the other one. and then you can put on a uh, wrap with a heavier cloth and this is when he and has pin it uh, in place. a little congestion or a little uh, croups croup. or flus a uh, coughs this type of thing uh, the heating compress to the chest is a wonderful adjunct will he cry he doesn't seem, he seems to not be crying. He's, he's quite, this is quite a painless procedure. Okay. And uh, I, I can't say that they Got to be very cry. careful. It's not too hot, though. Uh, well, it's cool water to start with, and within 30 minutes it should warm up. And because babies can't tell you if it's warming up, in 30 minutes stick your finger down in there and make sure that it's starting to feel warm. Mm -hmm. Now, garlic tea is also one thing you can give babies. Mm -hmm. I have treated a number of babies with severe uh, chest infections in my Amish population, bronchitis, bronchitis, pneumonias, asthmas, with a little bit of garlic tea. Mm -hmm. Again, it has wonderful properties. You can uh, blend it up and you can put it in a bottle or put it in a dropper to to give to the baby along with the heating compress. Again, it doesn't matter where you live in the world. This is go this is going to work, and God can bless that, especially if you bathe these things in prayer. Uh, is what you're telling us, right? That's right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, uh, Dr. Mary Ann McNeilis. We're excited about many of the stories you have to share about you know, working and ministering with people around the world. But more than that, the fact that no matter where you are in the world, you can use simple remedies, simple means that anybody can use. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have a lot of uh, experience. You do need to have one thing, that is trust in God uh, before you begin a treatment, after you end that treatment, um, and then use really the principles that we find in your book, God's Healing Way. We hope that this program has been helpful and that you'll have health as a result that lasts for a lifetime. Mm -hmm.